Okay, so in terms of dietary versatility, we get into some uh, teeth terminology here. Um, the four tooth types, incisors, which are your flat kind of front first uh, section of teeth there. Um, after that, uh, and usually uh, we kind of count off our teeth in quadrants. So essentially you count one fourth of your mouth. Um, so again, you have two incisors, then a canine, um, and then you have two premolars and then three molars with wisdom teeth. Um, and so our dental formula is essentially what we would call a two, one, two, three. And a two, one, two, three dental formula is associated with, um, uh, all great apes, which is your chimps, gorillas, uh, bonobos, orangutans. Um, and then most, uh, most primates actually have a two, one, two, three, um, New World primates, some of them have a 2133, so they would have three premolars. Um, teeth are definitely dependent on preferred food types and um, uh, a, a, like ability to chew and or function that way. Um, cusps and crests are what are on our molars and they're used for crushing, pulp, pulping, puncturing, and shearing. Um, so again, cusps are the indentation, and then crests are kind of the, the part that's actually protruding. Um, out of that, you can pretty much uh, do a lot of damage on food with the uh, premolars especially. Um, a tooth comb is associated with a lemur. Um, and a tooth comb, you may want to uh, Google what a tooth comb looks like. Um, a tooth comb is essentially the bottom teeth of the lemur and they're all attached through little bony structures um so i would definitely uh google a picture of a tooth comb unless i have one later in the presentation i don't think that i do um but again lemurs are associated with tooth combs uh, a loaf is an enamel ridge connecting uh the front and the back cusps so that's kind of a, a definite terminology um that probably you're not familiar with um, and I probably will not test you necessarily on a loaf. Um, a bi uh, bilophodont is a two ridge tooth. Um, and then diastema, which will be tested on, um, is super important. Dental formula is important as well. Um, the diastema is the space between teeth. Um, humans don't have diastema. Um, gorillas do. Um, actually, although I would say currently, if you typed in diastema, I think people, uh, are, well, dentists and or, um, new kind of descriptions show diastema as just being a separation of teeth, um, as kind of biological anthropology, really what we focus on here is the separation of teeth so that teeth can fit from the top into the bottom section. So if you look at diastema of a gorilla, uh, the large top canine needs to fit in between kind of the bottom uh, canine and incisor. So uh, those are separated out. There's a space there, and that's what diastema is super important. Um, canine premolar um, honing complex, right? So this is, um, uh, again, we have non-honing. Um, the honing complex is upper canines are sharpened against the lower third premolars when the jaws are open and closed. Um, so again, that, that honing complex is that, that they actually like close down on that structure and they, they're sharpening. Um, our teeth don't sharpen, they just kind of match, right? Um, enamel thickness is dependent on the species as well, which is fascinating, um, and a harness of food preferences. Humans and orangutans have thick enamel. Chimps and gorillas have thinner enamel. Um, some of this is evolutionary. Um, it's a good thing that we have thick enamel because human beings, especially when we go down to the ground and start eating um, products off the ground, we end up eating a lot of uh, dirt, soil, sediment, uh, rocks, those kinds of things come with that food. So essentially it can, it, we, you need hard enamel for that, for that uh, to be able to process that. Um, the parental investment, again, with parental investment, you get larger brains. Um, you, the uh, sociability and that social time starts to develop the learning process. Um, the back portion of the brain is related to vision. This is where, you know, our, um, the occipital part of, of the skull, um, 
is definitely related to our vision. So the bigger that, bigger that is and the more connections to your optic nerve, uh, which is your eyeball running back, the nerve that connects your eyeball to the back of your head. Um, the olfactory bulb is used for smell and hearing, which is shrinks and primates. I've said that already. Uh, birth to usually one offspring at a time. This is also characteristic with primates. We don't have litters, which dogs and other animals and cats and other animals do. Um, relatively long intervals between births. Uh, what's fascinating here is that uh, humans change this structure around culture, but in um, kind of indigenous pastimes, we're talking, you know, 12,000 years ago, um, there was usually three to four years between births and women usually only had one to two kids um, and maybe three. Um, so they had less kids than probably what we're used to thinking about. And there was definitely a long time period between them. Um, and then you definitely get intense and elongated time for, for pre-adult care. This is probably the biggest key here, um, which is parents are with us um, and primates, parents, with their children for a, for an extended period of time. Um, and really the, the adulthood is basically pushed off. Um, now all other primates adulthood happens faster than it happens with us. Um, but, but what's fascinating with us is that adulthood is also a, um, has become kind of this subjective cultural norm, right? Um, again, in this indigenous kind of time period, 250,000 years ago to 12,000 years ago, um, and even currently in band level societies, uh, men and women would have been given that uh, delineated kind of status um, at the ages of, of usually around 14, 15 or 16. And those individuals would have been married um, and, and gotten married at that time period. So um, we think of that as still childhood. Um, that's considered adolescence, right? When we look at the life cycle. Um, but again, not necessarily childhood. Um, but even so, uh, primates have shorter, uh, pre-adult kind of childcare, uh, pre-adult care, um, than we do. We have prolonged, um, primate family tree. So what we have here, and this is definitely something, uh, that I, you should probably do some of your own kind of research to really look at the. Uh, the tree and how kind of the primate tree looks. Um, Strepsorhines, larger olfactory bulbs, um, nails, claws, grooming claw, uh, naked rhinarium. These are going to be your lemurs following the Strepsorhine. That's an example. Um, the haplorhines are larger brains, more sexual dimorphism, fewer teeth, eyes are convergent, so binocular vision. Again, if you look at the Strepsorhine, um, lemurs' noses are, are longer, um, but they're still primates because they have the occipital bar. Um, they do have a grooming claw, so they've kind of maintained this claw structure with one uh, claw, um, but they're still considered, again, primates because of the occipital bar. Um, again, the haplorhines, they're going to be kind of your uh, chimps, us. There's a huge group. Strepsorhines is quite small. Um, and then tarsiers are kind of a, a breakdown into their uh, an interesting group as well. Um, they Different primatologists put them in different groups. Um, currently... They're kind of tossed in with the uh, um, haplorhines. Sometimes they're separated out. Um, and again, remember, this is just human characteristic, kind of uh, cat categorizing and, and cataloging. Um, so anthropoids, this is the, the kind of name before um, or moves forward in terms of the, the platyrines and the catarines. Um, platyrines are new world monkeys. Um, Again, New World monkeys, and this is going to be a giant hint, hint, hint as well. Platyrines and New World monkeys, some of them have prehensile tails. Um, this is an example of a, of a monkey with a prehensile tail. Um, remember the, the distinction, hopefully we get this. Apes don't have tails. Um, so again, if you, if, you, if you go to the zoo and you see a chimp and somebody says, oh, look at the monkey, it's not a monkey. The difference between those are, are extreme, actually. Uh, what you're looking at here is, is definitely a monkey. This looks like uh, a spider monkey. Um, and it has a prehensile tail and the prehensile tail actually acts as another arm or hand, right? It's able to wrap around a tree. Um, and then catarines are old world monkeys, apes, and humans. And we're part of the catarine family. Um, so this is one of those, uh, trees that kind of helps a, a little bit in terms of the breakdowns, um, and where we kind of fit on this. 
Uh, this is over millions of years. So this is where we broke off. Um, gorilla, we break off. Actually, they've kind of pushed that back to more like, I feel like 12 million. Um, chimpanzees were more at like six to seven million. That's when we started to get our bipedal ancestors kind of taking off from there. Um, and then again, our ancestral primates at 60 million years ago. Um, and really it's kind of that 64-ish million years ago, we get proto-primates, um, plasti adapti forms, and then we start to get Euro-primates, which are true primates more at 55 million years ago. Um, so again, there's this, there's a little bit of debate in the field and we'll get into that when we get into the second half of the class. Um, primates of the world, what you need to know about this slide is that um, primates only occur in what we would say uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia, um, Africa, South America, and Latin America. For some reason, they don't have um, a picture of a monkey in kind of the Central America zone. There was definitely monkeys in Central America, and there are. Um, but if we look at true North America as being the United States, Northern Mexico, and Canada, there are no monkeys living currently. Um, and there are also no monkeys living currently in Europe um, or Australia or Antarctica. Um, there are um, macaws that live in the rock, uh, the Strait of Rock of Gibraltar, um, but that's more associated with, with again, with Northern Africa. Um, so again, don't realize that um, primates only basically live in according to this class, right? Uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia, so if you said Asia, um, and Africa. Uh, Madagascar would also be included, but it, and Madagascar is a lot of times included with Africa. And then Latin and South America, okay? Uh, this is the grade eight distribution. So again, we're talking about uh, chimpanzees, and you can see that we have Western chimpanzees, and then we have um, Nigerian Cameroon chimpanzees, uh, and then we have central chimpanzees, and then we have kind of these different sections of gorilla. Um, and then we even have Eastern chimpanzee, Eastern lowland gorilla, and then we have bonobo territory. Um, and again, bonobos are what many consider to be the uh, pygmy chimps. Um, with, they're smaller versions of the chimps. Um, bonobos and, and chimps are quite different. Um, chimps hunt, they eat more meat, they're male dominated in terms of a patriarchy. Um, there's not a lot of distribution of kind of food products. Uh, bonobos are much more, they're the, they don't make war. They don't do a lot of hunting. They don't eat a lot of meat. They're matriarchal. They're run by females. Um, females do a lot of food distribution. Um, and, uh, they, again, they, they make love, not war. So they, they, they tend to, have sex with new individuals that come into the group um other individuals it doesn't really necessarily matter on in terms of uh sexuality they're kind of uh, in in that um uh fluid area and so bonobos and chimpanzees are quite different even though they look very similar uh primate social behavior females expend more energy for the creation and caring of the young um, and then there's more male competition. Again, we're, we're, a lot of this we're talking about really start to make a distinction between human behavior or try to human behavior and primates. The tough part is that a lot of these lines are going to be blurred for you all. I think that, um, in terms of language and culture, uh, what you'll see here in, in, in the videos is that primates absolutely have language and culture and it's the language and their call systems and their grunts are so complicated that we're just barely starting to learn them. Um, and we're scratching the very, like, the very, very beginning of learning primate language. Um, but it's because we just assume that they didn't have language because we don't hear it. Um, we can't make the tonal differentiations. Uh, but that being said, so there's a lot of commonalities and things that bring us together. But then there's also things that, that start to separate as well. Um, male competition is an interesting one. Um, we currently have male competition in the human population, but it's only because we allow it. Um, it's fascinating is that, again, that 250,000 year time period of, of human beings prior to civilization cities and, and the state, um, 
you would have had arranged marriages. There were there was no male competition. Um, male competition comes about when we have like romantic love and we move towards uh, individuals making the choice of mates 